no sooner did they come closer to it than they noticed birds from nowhere in the skies. And these birds had three little pebbles each, the size of a pea, and even smaller, small little pebbles made of clay. And from a very high altitude, they released these pebbles. When it dropped from there, the small pebbles went straight through these men and killed them on the spot. Abraha was the governor uh, was the governor of Yemen under Najashi. So Najashi, not the same Najashi as the one that the Prophet and Sahaba emigrated to, but his father. Uh, that Najashi had conquered some areas of Yemen, and he had sent his governor, and his governor's name was Abraha. So Abraha was the governor of the Najashi in Yemen, and he saw his people every year go north. So he said, where are you guys going? So they said, we have to go to Hajj. You have to go to Hajj. He said, why? What is there? He said, there's the house of Allah. So he said, I will build you a house that is far better than any of your houses and you will come for Hajj under here. So he built a massive uh, cathedral because they were Christians, the likes of which he thought would become the biggest temple uh, of Christianity in the entire Arabian Peninsula. And he then said, all of you have to come over here rather than going to up north to the Kaaba. And he wanted people to flock there for many reasons, to worship there as well as for business purposes. And you need to deal with them if you want people to come here. And he became so angry, Abraha, that he said, as revenge, I will destroy this house so people must come to my house. So he said, no problem. I have one elephant, a big elephant. We will take the elephant and we will walk through with our armies. And that is why he uh, gathered together his army. And of course, because they were from Abyssinia, so they had elephants. Otherwise, elephants did not live in the Arabian Peninsula as natural beasts over there. But because he was from Africa, so he had a group of African elephants. And of course, the people of Africa had trained the elephants to be uh, instruments of war. And uh, this was when he marched uh, to the uh, Kaaba and he uh, went with his army uh, of around, they say some say eight and some say 20 elephants. That says the vast of narration say there, were, there was just one main big elephant. The rest were normal camels and so on. And they, they, there are some historians who say no, it was a whole army of many elephants. But the Quran speaks of one elephant, Al-Fil, meaning one elephant. So the people of the elephant, big huge elephant and there were armies that came with it is also said that he hired a Arab guide to take him to the Kaaba. And they started marching towards Makkah al Mukarramah. When they were outside somewhere near Ta'if, they sent a messenger to say, go and look for the Sayyid, the leader of these people and tell them, we don't want to fight. We are coming, destroy the house and we're going back. So Abdul Muttalib was the leader. He was told, this is what the man is coming for. He said, okay, let him come. Uh, and Abraha came uh, with, uh, with the entire army. As you know, he, when he got to Mecca, 
he captured the livestock of Abdul Muttalib, over 200 camels and sheep, which by the way shows you Abdul Muttalib is a rich man now. Times have changed for the Quraysh, mashallah, money is flowing in. And in the process, the army came in and usurped more than 200 camel of Quraysh. And Abdul Muttalib told one of these men, look, you can come and destroy the house, no problem. But our camels, we want them back. So the man took him to Abraha. And Abdul Muttalib was one such person, very handsome, very strong, very tall. He looked like a leader. So much so it is said when he entered into the tent that uh, Abraha was in awe of this man, so tall and handsome. He actually stood up from his chair that he said to Abraha, or sorry, he said to Abdul Muttalib, I have no problem with you. You just get out of the city and I'll destroy your house. And I have no problem with you guys. There's nothing personal. I just want to destroy your house of worship. It's nothing against uh, you. And that's when Abdul Muttalib said, I didn't come to you to talk about the house. I didn't come to you to talk about the Kaaba. I came to you to talk about my camels. And this is when Abraha lost all respect for Abdul Muttalib. And he said, I have come to destroy your holy house. And you're coming to talk to me about your camels. Abraha thought Abdul Muttalib is going to argue about his house. And so he was honoring him. Then when he said, I want my camels, he said, I lost all respect for you. That's when, Abraha, that's when Abdul Muttalib gives the, the one-liner punch, the, the upper right cut. And he says that it's not my business. The, the house has a Lord who will protect it. And the camels have a Lord and it's my job to protect the camels. Right? So because of this one-liner, Abraha gave the camels back. And that was when the, the Quraysh left the city after making lots of dua. Abdul Muttalib is pleading in front of the Kaaba, Oh Allah, we cannot fight this army. They're too strong for us. They have these elephants. They have these thousand men, whatever. You take care of it. And they then left to the mountains. And these people started proceeding towards the Kaaba. The, the elephant refused to go further. It stopped. Amazing. It stopped. And they began to beat it. It refused. It didn't go further. When they turned it around and beat it, it went running. When they stopped it and turned it back around, it stopped again. Subhanallah. Who stopped it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But whenever they turned him in any other direction, he would move in that direction. So Allah stopped the camel, the, the elephant from entering. And as they're debating what to do, that is when large birds came. No sooner did they come closer to it than they noticed birds from nowhere in the skies. And these birds had three little pebbles each, the size of a pea, and even smaller, small little pebbles made of clay. And from a very high altitude, they released these pebbles. And the pebbles came down at such force. You know, today we have, we learn about gravity and we learn about Newton and this one and that one. Wallahi, if you take a look at this explanation of Surat Al-Feel, you will come to realize that that altitude, when it dropped from there, the small pebbles went straight through these men and killed them on the spot. And people were just watching. Allahu Akbar. Didn't Abdul Muttalib say that house has a Lord who will protect it? To this day, you need to remember the Kaaba is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this and mention is made of this in Surah Al-Feel.
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ Did you not see what your Rabb has done to the people of the elephant? Those who came with the elephant, Allah destroyed them. And some of them whom these pebbles did not get to, they were injured, they went back, and they were inflicted with disease. So much so that Abraha himself, his organs began to drop. Literally, his fingers started falling off. And everywhere they went, as they went back, they were heading back. And his hand fell off. Next thing, his leg fell off, and then he died. A very bad death. And uh, it is mentioned that uh, the traces of the elephant still were there when the Prophet was uh, born. And one of the Sahaba, his name is Qubath ibn Ashyam. Qubath ibn Ashyam has a very famous narration in Sunan al-Tirmidhi where. I saw the elephants and their defecations when I was a young boy. So he's trying, and of course the Prophet was born, was born in the year of the elephant. The fact that Qubath remembers this, so he's saying, I'm older than him. How did he prove he's older? I remember my mother showing me the remnants of the uh, elephants. So these were two incidents that had happened just before the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam.